My name is Derek Holt. I am the senior programmer at Runaway down in Dunedin. Um, we mostly work on free to play uh, mud wall titles, but we're starting to get into um, to VR and stuff. We we're working on a top secret um, VR title, um, working on mobile um, VR um, using Google Daydream. So, what I'm going to show you today is uh, how we can get started, how we can easily get started building VR titles with, with, um, with Google Daydream. Um, so, first off, what's the difference between mobile VR and desktop VR? Well, with mobile VR, um, first of all, you've got mobility. You've seen the Oculus Reads and all that kind of stuff, and they have all laid out on, on the ground in a big 6x6 six six, uh, square where you can walk around and stuff. Um, but you're tethered to a computer, and you, know, you can't walk out of that space. With mobile VR, yeah, basically what you've got is a completely mobile device. You strap on your head and you can be sitting down. You don't have to you don't have to be at your computer. You can be on a plane playing it. You, you know, doesn't you, you can take it with you. Um, and that means that you uh, also have potentially um, a bigger audience because um, uh, I mean this is all based on cell phone technologies. Lots of people got cell phones. They can, um, um, uh, like not everyone can afford a big Oculus fruit or whatever. Um, most people can afford a cell phone, and the technology is getting there nowadays where it is literally just a cell phone that you're playing on and uh, just struggling on the edge of it. Uh, there's also, uh, there is performance issues though, so uh, with a Oculus or, or any other big uh, titles like PSVR or, or any of those, you are, you, you've got a you know, full computer sitting there um, with, you know, um, granted graphics card, you know, like GTX 1080 or whatever, running your, uh, your Oculus on mobile VR, it is literally just a cell phone. So you're, you're limited with your CPU, your memory, the hard disk space, uh, and potentially your, uh, your resolution. Um, with desktop VR, you have um, what we call uh, six times, so six degrees of freedom. What that means is it tracks your head rotation, you know, looking around and moving your head, but it also tracks when you move around in 3D space. So you can kind of look around objects and, and so on. With mobile VR, uh, all the platforms that are available in the market at the moment, they are just three, three degrees of freedom. So all it does is it tracks your rotation and you know, where you're looking and how you're tilting your head. You can't actually look around. You know, if there's, something, if there's an object in 3D space that you can't look behind it. So, yeah, we really like the, the Google Data, and there's also the, uh, the Gear VR to play with, but uh, we kind of like this, so I thought I'd uh, break down what it, what it is. So basically, you start off, you've got your, your Pixel phone. So this is just a, uh, well, sorry, you can get a Pixel phone or a, any Daydream compliant phone. And then you go out and you buy your Daydream View, and that's basically uh, uh, work that you chuck your phone on and strap it on your head. That comes with the, the headset and it also comes with a little hand controller. Now, the, the, the reason that I, we like uh, the Daydream, one of the reasons we love Daydream more than the Gibby is that um, Gibby there is a, a controller you can buy, but it's an optional extra. With Daydream, you know that everyone that's bought the set has the controller, and so the controller actually really expands what you can do uh, in a VR uh, title. It allows you to interact with the world rather than just kind of you know, pointing and taking on, on the headset. Now the controller has three main buttons, so it's got a, a home button, sorry the capacity is pretty rubbish, but um, so there's a home button that will take you back to the menu, uh, there's an app button that you can cut up to do whatever, and there's also a full clickable touch pad at the top, so this is like a, a mouse pad, so you can track around on it, uh, and it, can, and it tra can track where your finger is, and it's also clickable, so you can say, I'm clicking on the left hand side, I'm right hand side. Uh, on, the, uh, on the device there is a full um, Daydream menu, so it's all in VR, so you can put the headset on and you can navigate in VR and choose what you're going to play. There's also a full um, Daydream store in VR, so you can uh, get on the store, search titles, download them, buy them, whatever, all without taking the headset off. 
Cool. So, um, actually, building things in, um, uh, for Google VR. Um, so, Google's got SDKs for Unity, for Unreal, and for Android. I'm going to be showing you the Unity stuff today. Uh, but there is uh, SDKs for the other two platforms as well. So, Android, I mean, just pure Java. Um, right, so this is kind of a rundown of what I'm going to, what I'm going to be looking at today. So, the main steps we're going to be looking at is what we need to have set up in Unity, what well, like our prerequisites, getting the actual install, uh, SDK installed. Then there's a bunch of prefabs that we're going to chuck into a scene to actually enable us to, uh, enable us to build stuff. And then we're going to build an event system so we can use the controller to interact with the world. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at some custom controller handling, so it's just a little bit more advanced stuff. And then a little uh, quick look at some spatial audio. So, for a start, what do we actually need for uh, uh, mobile VR development? <laughs> So, uh, to get started, basically what you need is, uh, you can actually do this without having a, or you can get started on development without having an actual Google Daydream device. All you need is any Android phone that's got KitKat or better and an Excel on it, and we use that so that we can uh, uh, simulate having a, the actual physical control. Uh, the SDK needs Unity 5.6 or newer, and you need to have it set up with the Android build target instead. Uh, and then you'll need your Android MDK, SDK, GDK, all those kind of things. Just usual stuff that you need for any sort of Android development. Um, with the SDK, you're going to need the build tool so you can have ADV to talk to your uh, controller, uh, sorry, platform tools, and then your build tools and your SD driver. Like I say, this is all stuff that is kind of standard for uh, Android development. Well, let's have a quick look at that. So if we go uh, and have a look at our uh, preferences. So in your external tools, you'll see that it's got places where you can chuck your SDK and JDK or NDK, and it's got download links there so you can go and find them. But it's, if you're doing any sort of uh, mobile development, you probably already have this one set up. Um, so if Okay, so actually, so now, so what I've got here is I've just got a, a 3D scene with some objects in it. So just a small 3D scene with some, some objects in it. And we're just going to uh, put the, uh, the GBR uh, stuff into it and, and start walking around and interacting with it. So in order to get started, what we need to do is have a look at our build settings. We need to make sure we've actually got Android set as our build target because these phones, uh, these phones are all but they're just an Android phone. So if we, if what you need to do first is you just need to make sure that you've got Android set, set as your build target. So you just go switch platform and that will set up your new up for that. If we go on to our player settings, can you guys see this on here? It's kind of rubbish. Dude, it looks kind of rubbish. <laughs> um, hopefully you can kind of see the, the final detail. Um, if we look at our render set, uh, our Player settings. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you are targeting Android 7, so Nougat or, um, or better. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to turn on virtual reality support. And Unity out of the box has Daydream support, so I'm just going to select that. Um, yeah, like I said, this is all out of the box with Unity. And so I'm just going to switch between my type, uh, slides occasionally just to read your things. So that's basically what we did. We made sure we had our target platform from this Android, we added the data and render it, and made sure that our target level was uh, Android 7. So uh, then the next step is we just grab the SDK. So Google's got, like I say, uh, SDKs for Unity, for Unreal, and for Android. Um, they're all on the uh, all available full source from the Google VR uh, uh, GitHub pages. So this is the one for Unity. Uh, so you can you can actually pull this whole package down into your Unity folder and it will work. Uh, or you can just grab the Unity package and it will download it as well. So let's do that. So I'm just going to import. I'm just going to use the Unity asset. So I'll just import that. 
So when you first grab this, what I recommend doing is there's a bunch of stuff at the start, a whole bunch of demos. Uh, I recommend that when you first want to play with this, just make an empty project for, uh, and import the SDK and have a look at the demos. There's some demos there for um, for some UI uh, examples and demos around how to use the controller and stuff. It's worth having a look at what's yeah, there. But I don't know what the problem is, so I'm going to import that. While it's important, um, the other thing you want to do uh, from the go, go to the GitHub page and just download a is uh, something called the GDR controller emulator. And it's just an APK that you can use ADB to push out so you are crappy little uh, KitKat will be the phone. And um, it basically gives you a full simulator for having, having the controller um, before you actually go out and buy the kit. Okay, so let's finish installing now. Um, what they did, uh, installing the SDK, is chuck everything into this Google VR folder. It's got all the plugins, it's got all the prefabs, it's got all the textures, it's got everything you need just in this folder. So it's not going to be mixed up with any of your other code. Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to uh, throw a few prefabs into the scene just so, so we can start uh, simulating in the environment and, um, and interacting with it. So, excuse me. So, um, I'm going to throw these slides on. on um, I'll throw a link up on Twitter afterwards so uh, you can grab all this stuff. But this is kind of a list of the different prefabs we're going to need. Um, so, we're going to use the GDR editor emulator, and that's going to allow tracking to be in the uh, editor. So, you can actually test from the editor before you manage uh, your device. Uh, the GDR controller main is going to allow us to track in, in 3D space what you're doing with the controller. And then there's the GDR controller pointer, and that actually puts a 3D representation in, in uh, VR space of the controller. So when you look around with your headset on, you can actually see what you're doing. And finally, uh, we'll get to a laser, but there's an event system, so we can actually track events uh, from the controller. So let's kind of look at that. So in here, what I've got is I've got uh, my main camera. And I've got it just uh, underneath the player route. Now the reason I'm using a player route is I'm going to use that as that's going to kind of be my uh, like so my camera and everything else, and I can move that around and everything's going to move with it. Now that needs to be I've got to set at 1.7 height off the off the ground because uh, you don't want to have your player route just on the ground and then your camera above it because that actually kind of messes up with the GVR stuff. So just keep your your player route as at high height. So what we're going to do, so if we go onto our prefabs here, and we drag in this GPR editor to the user. And what this does is it allows us to uh, simulate in Unity uh, moving around. And on all these uh, prefabs, you'll see over here there's a um, little wee informational thing that says how you can do it with the mouse and keyboard. So if I run this now, if I hold down the hold button, I can use my mouse to simulate tracking my head around and not in my environment. Okay. So next, what we're going to want is we're going to want our controller main. So I'll just try to achieve the controller main in here. Once again, it's got a list of things over the slide there on how you can use, you can hold shift and use your mouse and keyboard to, uh, to simulate moving the control around. It's kind of rubbish, that's why I recommend using the, the, uh, the emulator. Uh, and then from that we're also going to want to have our controller pointer. And once again, this is our 3D representation of the controller uh, in virtual space. So if I can zoom in there, there's a wee point, you can see it. Once we start firing it up, let's see. I'll take this fire up now. So here's my 3D space, I'll look down, hold up my emulator, so this is my KitKat phone, actually this is a Google, but you can just use the KitKat phone. So you can see how to do it, you can kind of you know, push in, click in buttons and stuff like that, so you can do that with your phone. Now what I recommend though is if once you do get a, uh, a device, you can actually tear this, tear this up to an actual uh, controller, which I'm doing now, that's a wee second. Okay, so now, 
That's the cool thing about this simulator that I was once you got the thing. I actually do this at the start of the day when I just leave it on my desk and ignore it, and now I've got my control rule wired up ready to go. Okay, you'll see that, uh, so there's basically in space, um, so you've got your controller, and then you've got the ray that's being cast out of it that's kind of pointing to what you're interacting with. Now, if I turn off, uh, I'm just going to not maximize and play for a second. With the controller, what they do is they have, so it's got this R model here. So it's like a mathematical model of, so because this is a thread off device as well, so it only tracks rotation. So you can be waving your arm around like that, but all it knows is that it's kind of doing this. Um, but what it can also, what they have here is like a mathematical model of where it's likely to be in 3D space. So it kind of has a, a concept of, you know, to your shoulder, to your elbow, to your wrist. And so as you lift it up, it actually lifts up in, in space here. The other thing is they have, so you'll notice here that my line is not quite straight. They have a tilt angle here, which is user customizable. So normally set to about 15 degrees. Can you guys see that again? Cool. And yes, it's normally set to about 15 degrees. And what that allows you to do is, so you're, you're playing in 3D space and you want to touch the ground. You don't have to be have this awkward kind of thing like this. It can be just a bit more natural aimed at. That'll be important to know. Okay, the other thing that we're going to want, so we've got this uh, controller in 3D space, we're actually going to want to start uh, listening to events for what's happening. So I'm just going to drag in this event system. Okay. And so, yeah, you need to system. So I'll just drop that pretty fairly in there. Basically, if you've ever done any um, uh, uh, stuff in Unity, basically, there's all the events for, let me just go through the one. There's all your events for, you know, when you drag your mouse over an object or when you, you know, drag it out, or when you click on an object. These are just the standard Unity interfaces that you can implement. In order for us to, uh, to receive these events, so we need the, the event system prefab into your scene, and then on any of your um, objects that you want to interact with, you just chuck on a GBM on the physics raycaster, and that tells it that it's, it wants to accept messages from the controller. Uh, so there's the point of physics raycaster for physical objects, objects in 3D space, and there's the point of graphic raycaster if you've got uh, canvases in our uh, world space. And so you can still point it at, at, at like buttons and whatever in the whole space. So if I do look in here, so I've got a uh, cube here. And basically what you want to do is you want to add in your Google the uh, pointer physics raycaster. Because what it does is it, it does a physics raycaster kind of. And so if I run this up now, Um, so yeah, basically you can see the little dot there now, like what I'm pointing at. Um, and basically what it does is it, it casts out to any colliders to figure out where and you know, how far away that little dot, dot's going to uh, turn up. You'll notice here this bolt over here doesn't have a collider, so that dot is actually casting through it and you can't actually see it. So you just want to make sure you've got colliders on everything that you want to interact with in the environment. Um, right, so let's build up something where we can target a device, uh, target an object on the scene. So what I'm going to do, we've <coughs> got a couple of things here. So let's have a look at uh, a directory view script. So I'm just going to make sure it requires, it's got a rigid body so that I can move it. Uh, and it's got that GDR point of physics raycaster so that I know that it wants to accept messages. And what I'm doing is in my class, I'm just saying I want to implement the I pointer enter handler, the exit handler, and the click handler. And when the pointer goes over, uh, over it, I'm just going to set the color of the object to read. When it goes back out, I'm just going to set it back to the default light. When I click on it, I'm just going to use that pointer read data to figure out where in 3D space I've clicked on it and just give it a read pulse up. And so this deep point of event data, this, this is, um, these are just standard Unity events. So if I run this up now, 
So what if we want to do some custom control handling? So what if I want to drag that, uh, that drag a cube around? What I'm going to use is that I drag handler, and I'm going to um, I need to figure. So when I click on an object, I'm going to say, okay, here's my control in 3D space. There's the object. I'll figure out the radius, and then as I move my finger up, I'm just going to drag it around the radius where my control is pointing. Make sense? So let's actually do that. So if we have a look at uh, this, right here, uh, actually let's do this one first. So maybe we just want to walk, move around this thing. So let's just go there. So there's this chair teleport strip. So maybe if we just want to click on uh, any uh, chair, we just want to teleport to it. That way we can actually move around. So what I'm going to do here is I've got that player root that we're talking about. It's just a node, it's nothing fancy about that class. Um, when I click on a chair, it's just going to move the player uh, 1.7 units above it. This is just a standard kind of unit height. And uh, uh, set my position and rotation the same as the chair. So I'll move all my chairs. Let's try the chair toggle script. Okay, of course, I need to tell these about that player. The player route because I'm going to be moving that, so I'm just going to drag that in. Uh, yeah. Of course, you, ideally you'd be wanting to use dependency injection or singleton or whatever, so it's like having to grab this. But uh, yeah, it's just for this. Okay, so if we can't jump into the 3D now, so if I click on a chair, now I'm pointing at that view. If I click on another chair, it moves to that. But ideally, what you want to be doing is having some sort of fade effect, you know, flip to black and then uh, teleport and then blink back. There you go. Cool, so we can move around the environment now. Let's get into that, uh, the uh, drag script. So this is going to be a bit more complex. Let me just add comments on this stuff. Cool. So remember, when I begin dragging, I figure out how far away the object was, grab that radius. And that's going to happen on the, on the frame that I start dragging, or realize that I've been dragging. Then every frame that I drag it is going to call this. And remember, so this is just using the I, I drag, I begin drag, and I end drag handles. So every frame that I drag, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that tilt angle, remember that little 15 degrees tilt angle? I'm just going to turn that into a uh, a quaternion, a rotation of quaternion. Then I'm going to grab the, uh, so the full angle that I'm going to uh, figure out where I'm rotating that object. So it's going to be where in space my player is, so I need my player rotation. And then on that, um, on the arm model, that's right, this one here, no, just this one here. You see on this GBR arm model, that's, the, that's where that, that mathematical calculation of where the thing is. So that, um, we're going to use that to figure out the delta rotation from our, from our body to where our controller is. Okay, so that's the controller rotation from here. And then I'm going to add the tilt angle. So I get the play rotation, I get the controller rotation from that, and then I get the tilt. I just add all those together, the multiple elements of the paternity of those. And then for our uh, target that we're dragging around, I'm just going to uh, get the center point of where the controller is, uh, stretch it out that, um, that angle and then that radius, and then I'm just going to set the target position and rotation. So let's grab this cube here. 
c'è per uomo. Yeah, just need to make sure that uh, uh, the podcast for the as well. Okay, so once again, that's going to need to know about our player root because it's been using that calculation, and it's going to need that arm model. And so, once again, like ever, you want to use dependency injection for this or a service locator or whatever. So now, in 3D space, on this cube here, as I drag it around, it's using that calculation. Now, this is using a set position, so the physics kind of suck. You can kind of push them into other objects and it looks really janky. Ideally, what you want to do, and this is what we do in the title that we're working on, is we say, okay, this is where the object is now, this is where it's been dragged to. I'll apply a force to move it there. So I remove gravity basically and apply a force to push it there. And that way it will uh, collide with things properly and you, know, you can push things around with it and so on. It works much nicer. But you get the idea of it. Cool. So, what if. Um, so, another thing I want to do is let's build a torch. So, once again, we want to know where in 3D space our controller is. And we're going to put a torch object in there and cast a light. So we've got this uh, torch up here. And once again, it's pretty much the same calculations as before. Oh, yeah. So let me, let me just, yeah, okay. So um, if the torch is active, it's just going to use that exact same calculation. So it's going to give the tilt angle, get the player rotation, get the control rotation, get the tilt angle, add them together, and then uh, set the, the model in the 3D space there. So let's grab a real prefab here for that. So torsion through your space, once again, we're going to need our player rig and the arm model for the calculation. Okay. I'll just turn off this light. And we need to make sure the torch is actually got the script on it. Oh, I did it twice here, thank you. Cool. Let's find out how long. Okay, well, actually, one of the other things I should show you is uh, so I've got this toggle torch thing here. So, this GDI controller input is like a, it's got a bunch of uh, static uh, properties on it that tell you when the different buttons have been pushed and so on. So, in fact, let's just have a quick look at that. Yes, so the GPI controller input has got uh, static um, uh, properties for uh, when you've clicked a button, so the first frame you clicked it, is every frame that you're holding it, and the last frame that you've released it. And the same for the touchpad, so you can uh, track all that kind of stuff, and the position of the touchpad in front. Okay, so now if we run that, if I push my add button, here we go, we have a torch in 3D space. Cool. So now this is, yeah, you can kind of see, we kind of walk around. This is three dimensions, uh, three dot, right? It's not, not tracking in 3D space for this all. So yeah, in that small scene, I had a dynamic lighter. Uh, and a simple thing like that is probably fine, but for the most part, it's uh, not really performant on mobile VR. Um, as far as performance goes, um, it's got to render each eye, so it's got to double up all of the rendering so, and from different positions, and it's also got to warp it to, to handle the, uh, the lens distortion. So a lot of the things that you're going to be doing uh, in, uh, in just normal 3D, you can't really do in VR. You've got to kind of drop it down. Because remember, this is just a cell phone. Just running a cell phone, CPU, you cell phone, TV. So you, you want to be really careful about uh, what you do there. And a simple thing like that, dynamic, dynamic lighting and dynamic shadows is, is OK. But once you start getting a lot more complex, then you can't really do that. 
Okay, so uh, the last part of the GBO SDK is spatial audio. And so there's a few behaviors that you put on objects here to handle uh, 3D audio uh, as part of the GBR system. And so these are like a mathematical model of what different sounds will sound like when they come from a different direction, a particular direction, and for each year. Uh, yeah. So let's have a look at that. I'm not going to uh, actually run this up, I'm just going to show you the, the, the objects, uh, the, the behaviors. So for a start, what you're going to want to do is on your uh, um, your camera, just add the GBR audio listener. And that's, that's basically the thing that is going to absorb the sounds of uh, three uh, position sounds. And then if you have anything in your scene, say for instance this viper here, if I wanted to put a, a sound from that, then I'd add a GBR audio source. So there's a, a source in 3D space, and you can uh, so put an audio clip on it, and you can get how far the perform on it on the attenuation, what kind of stuff. And you can just position a whole lot of 3D sounds in 3D space. The other thing that you can do, I'll the time. The other thing you can do is you can have a GDR in your room. And this is a cool mathematical model for uh, let's try to get the sound field. Okay, we'll get the sound field. So, the sound field is something you can do where you can say, I want a 3D sound. So, we can get two audio blocks here. There's a sound that's stereo this way, and then a sound that's stereo this way. And so, you can have sound fields. You, know, you can hear a city off this way, and then you know, you know, trees chirping over here, and that's a bird chirping over here. You kind know, of get a sound field around there. The other one that you can do if, uh, instead, if you're working on an indoor environment, we can use an excellent is a GDR audio room. And this is a cool thing where you can basically say, I want a room of you know, 10 units by 10 units by whatever. So it's just sizing up the room. And you can say, on, on this wall, there is a blank concrete uh, wall. And on the ceiling, it's plaster. And on the ground, it's cobblestone. And there's actually a mathematical model for how the sound bounces around the room. So when you're in a nice tight enclosure uh, environment, if you're walking around, you could be placing footsteps at your feet, and it will echo up the, the way that you'd expect it in a, in a, a dungeon environment. Whereas out, if you're out in the field, you probably wouldn't want to use that. If you like us, I'm going to bother running anything up because you guys won't get here at probably. So. Okay, so I mean, that's pretty much everything that you need to build mobile games. It's pretty, pretty easy to set, uh, set up and get rigged up. Uh, so the last thing I want to do is just have a look at some other resources that, that you have. Um, so all of the stuff is uh, on the Google VR's GitHub page, so jump on that and it's got links to, to other, other resources. Uh, one of the other resources, resources that I put out is something called uh, Daydream Elements. And this is a bunch of um, examples uh, around locomotion, you know, moving around, uh, around uh, UI interaction. Um, they have well, they had some tumbling examples where if you're moving and your, your view shrinks, which I find terrible, but uh, yeah, but many UIs and stuff. And one of the other things that is in it is something called the Daydream Renderer. And this is some special shaders and renders and stuff specifically for the Daydream device, specifically targeted at uh, you know, the, the uh, stereo cockpit viewing and, and so on. So this has actually got some things around dynamic lighting, which, like I said before, is expensive. But they've, they've actually kind of uh, simplified the process for just for this very specific use. So dynamic lighting, dynamic shadows, uh, Physics-based rendering, you know, like um, uh, normal mapping and, and so on, uh, and things with reflections and, and highlights. So have a look at that. Cool. So in the future, what's coming up? So Google has actually announced a standalone daydream device, and so this isn't a cell phone. This is a physical device which is all in one. You can't take the phone out of it, but basically you buy it just for VR. Um, the cool thing about it is they've announced that it's got a new technology that I call WorldSense. And so that is actually six degrees of freedom. So you can actually walk around with it 
in 3D space. Um, as far as it's not tethered, of course, though, so you don't have to have your computer. You probably want to be a bit careful how that works because you know, it's not tethered to anything. There's no spots there figuring out where you are, so you can walk into things. But it's really cool technology. You could be, I mean, if you're playing with a on a plane, still, you can still use that tech. You could be sitting there you know, in, in a jungle and walk around a tree or whatever, you can probably use that, that tree to position stuff. Uh, there's heaps of new uh, daydream capable phones coming out. The same Samsung S8 is uh, going to be daydream compliant soon. Um, Huawei's got a model coming out, a couple of them, Alcatel's got them. So there's a bunch of new devices, I think I told you, you know, at least a dozen, probably more by the end of the year. And in the future, there's just going to be more and more. And it's going to get to a point where Possibly everyone with a phone is going to, like a, a, a half decent, you know, modern cell phone, is going to be able to use this technology. So that once again goes to the thing where you're going to have a much larger target audience than someone using an Oculus. Now, I saw some other little videos of the, uh, Google Pixel and the, the Google View. Um, I'm not 100 sure if it's officially released in New Zealand, but I've definitely seen it on PB Tech and on Trade Me. Uh, I think I saw it on the price point, I could be wrong there. But yeah, you can definitely get them in New Zealand. Cool, that's the end of uh, everything I want to show. Um, we've got a bunch of people from Runaway talking, so definitely um, tomorrow we've got Zoe, Emote, and Jonas talking, so definitely go and check out their stuff. Um, we are hiring at Runaway and Delene, so um, get in touch if you're interested. Cool, any questions? Oh, now the other thing is, I'm going to chuck these slides this afternoon on Twitter, so if you want to download them, so you've got a list of all the videos and everything you need, it'll be here. But yeah, um, if you don't manage to get a question answered today, then uh, send me an email, hit me up on Twitter, and I can get it to you. If you already had a world theoretically rigged for 3D spatial audio, do you need to replace audio, all the audio sources with GBR audio sources? Uh, I guess, good question. I guess you do, because that's got the mathematical model when you turn the heat and stuff. Right. Um, you know, I think you probably would. Okay. But, uh, the other thing I should mention is if you use an FMOD, uh, there is, like, FMOD has GDR plugins as well. Um, yeah, we're using it. It's cool. Anything else? Have you guys done any of the standalone stuff? I can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you guys looking into the AR stuff, like the AR kit on iOS and AR core on Android? Yeah, we had it. Was it Sith? You can play with it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's some quite cool stuff you can do with it, yeah. Uh, certainly, we're not on this project, but it's, it's some cool tech coming out there. Cool. Well, like I said, hit me up on, on uh, Twitter or send me an email if you've got any questions. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to, to give me a question and help out with anything. Thanks very much, everyone, for coming. Yeah.